Hello, I'm John Fardell and I'm delighted to be a member of the Scottish Silly Squad supporting Scottish libraries and the summer reading scheme this summer. I'm an author and an illustrator which means I get to write books and draw books. Some of my books are sort of chapter books like these ones, adventure stories, and a lot of my books are picture books like The Day Louis Got Eaten, and Jeremiah Jellyfish Flies High, you might have seen some of these, and Manfred the Baddie. I thought we'd start by having a little look at Manfred the Baddie. During this session I'll give you lots of tips and set you some drawing tasks and give you ideas for making up stories with words and pictures. But first we'll have a little look at one of mine. So here we go, we'll read Manfred the Baddie. I'll just stick my reading glasses on so I can see the words. There we go, okie dokie. Have a big cover there with Manfred and all his machines and all the bits of the story. I'm saying stealing the title there. You'll see there's loads of the story being told with the pictures in these books rather than the words. So that's a good tip if you're making up a story with pictures. Let the pictures tell lots of the story. And don't worry about using too many words, just the right ones. Here we've got just pictures. Manfred's Machines, a blueprint drawing of all his inventions for being a baddie. You can see there all the inventions he gets other people to make. So if you're a keen inventor, that can be fun. Making up inventions can give you lots of story ideas. And there's a lot of inventions in this book. And Manfred's loot and his treasure there on the title page. But the story really starts here. Here we go. Manfred the baddie was the baddest baddie of all. With his gang of henchmen, he would kidnap brilliant inventors. Help! Help! Go, go, go! Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> Whisk them away to his hideout and force them to build diabolical machines. Work for me, or I'll feed you to the piranha. <gasps> With which he robbed aeroplanes, raided art galleries, and conducted acts of piracy on the high seas. You can see all the things he's stealing. Somebody's having a birthday party. All the previous thefts were of valuable things like paintings and treasure and things. But here, birthday cake, candles, guitar, saxophone, but people's jewellery and watches. Valuable things and just horrible things to steal for the people who were trying to enjoy themselves. All going down into his submarine there. If Manfred the Baddie was hungry, he had only to snap his fingers and one of his henchmen would instantly bring him his favourite sandwich. Here you go, boss. Chocolate spread and raspberry jam. If any of his henchmen did anything wrong, I trust you remember to pick out all the raspberry seeds. Uh-oh. Manfred would make him stand in the corner whilst the other henchmen called him horrible names. Nincompoop, baldy head, big chin. Manfred the baddie was very bad indeed. Early one morning, Manfred was returning home from a night raid when he felt a little sniffle in his nose. Half an hour later, he was sneezing and sneezing and by the time he arrived back at his hideout, he had a full-blown cold. Runny nose, sore throat, achy head, shivery arms, wobbly legs, the lot. Manfred the baddie took himself straight off to bed. He waited for somebody to come and bring him a bowl of warm soup, but nobody came. He waited for somebody to come and tuck in his blankets and mop his fevered brow, but nobody came. He waited for somebody to come and read him a story and keep him company, but nobody came. Eventually, Manfred remembered his mobile phone and called the town doctor. This is Manfred the Baddy, he announced. I'm ill. Why isn't anyone making me get well? Who would want you to get well? asked the doctor. All the people you've robbed don't want you to get well. Ah, it's so peaceful with that Manfred the Baddy out of action for a while. All those brilliant inventors you've kidnapped don't want you to get well. Hooray! With Manfred out of the way, we've managed to escape. Now we can go home and get on with some proper work. Even 
Your henchmen don't want you to get well. This is the life. No more do this, do that. No, I can make myself a sandwich with raspberry seeds. Think about it, said the doctor. Manfred thought about it. I don't want to be a buddy anymore, he wailed. I want to be a goody. Hmm, said the doctor. Well, if you promise to give back everything you've ever stolen, and if you promise to be good from now on, I'll come and look after you until you're well. I promise, croaked Manfred. So the doctor came and brought Manfred bowls of warm soup and tucked in his blankets and mopped his fevered brow and read him stories and kept him company until he was well again. From that day on, Manfred was a reformed character. He would pay brilliant inventors to build amazing machines with which he built new art galleries, flew daring missions of mercy and gave pleasure rides to children. Three cheers for Manfred the Goody. No, no, too kind, too kind. He would ask his henchmen nicely if he wanted them to help him with something. Ahem, would you care to assist me in a little job of public benefaction this afternoon? And he made sandwiches for all of them. Here you go, lads. Manfred the Goody was the goodest goody of all. He never did anything really bad again. However, very occasionally, at night, when no one was looking, Manfred couldn't resist sneaking out of his bedroom, creeping into the town and doing something just a little bit Bring! naughty. Who's been ringing my doorbell? That man doesn't have two heads, by the way, in case you're wondering. People do wonder, but I meant it to look as if he's looking both ways really fast, but he can't see Manfred. There's Manfred running off, scampering off back to his room, looking all innocent there. And that's the end of Manfred the Baddie, really. Except we get another page or two pages of these blueprint inventions. There we are. There's the goody inventions. We had the baddie ones at the front and the goody rescuing machines and riding machines and things and building machines at the end. There we go. So Manfred the Baddie, hope you enjoyed that. So when I'm making up a story... I don't always start by getting everything right first time. Before I do any drawing or any writing, and I often do the pictures before I've really worked out what the words are and do them together. You don't have to write the whole thing with words first. You can work on the pictures. But before that even, sometimes I get pictures in my head. I have a good old daydream. I kind of drift off or if I'm having a walk with my dog or if I'm lying in the bath or on a train journey or something, then I get all sorts of imaginative ideas. And a good tip, one of my tips, is to have some paper with you so that you can scribble down your your ideas. So I have a notebook in my pocket and I carry a pen or a pencil with me. And then if I get a good idea or a daydream before I forget I've even had it, I can scribble it down. There we are. This is an old notebook and that's got a little rabbit with stripes and a sword and he's riding on a rocket. And I've put maybe the rabbit's really grumpy. So there's a few words, but mostly pictures. I don't know about you, but I kind of daydream in pictures. Sometimes I see real things like things to draw in the museum when that was open crocodile and the angry looking fish and some weapons and things what else oh some inventions there and a funny old bicycle and a racing car and i've put the crocodile driving the racing car the museum didn't do that so i'm beginning to muck around in my imagination i think what if i was mixing these things up or the museum had some some birds flying and then i've put somebody riding a bird with one of those curly weapons i was drawing earlier so i'm getting lots of imaginative ideas sometimes from real life and sometimes just from my head and I'm taking real things and I'm being silly with them. You can't really see a crocodile riding a, a racing car, but in your imagination you can. And in a story, it's more fun sometimes, even if you're starting with something real, like a town or a real place or some woods, to start making up things which don't really exist, having some fun and seeing how fun you can, you can be. A really good tip is to make sure that you're enjoying yourself when you're making up a story. If you're having fun and you're making yourself excited, or even if it's a scary, sad story, you can still be excited.
then the reader will be excited by what you're coming up with. If you're getting a bit bored when you're trying to make up your idea, just try something else. Just go back a bit and try and think of something more fun. So having lots of rough paper is a good plan. Lots of drawing paper. When I'm drawing something like Manfred the Baddie, here we are, I've got some of the rough drawings. See, I started on so just some really kind of rough paper, and that was my first go at Manfred. He doesn't look like Manfred the Baddie at all. He's got a sort of flying helmet on, and he's much thinner, a bit more good-looking than actual Manfred. But then he kind of evolved to be looking more like that. That was almost Manfred the Baddie, though I made him look a bit sinister, I think, with those eyelids. His eyes look a bit evil. So I kind of drew him again, and then eventually I got him about right. That's how he is in the book. So you can see my fancy drawing paper is quite thick, and I'm drawing these things with black ink and watercolour paint. I use a kind of old-fashioned pen to draw them with a jar of ink, which I can sort of dip in and do the black lines and paint brushes and water and tubes of paint, colouring it all up. But I don't worry about that to start with. I get lots of rough paper and I have a good old scribble. So you can see things like Manfred the Baddie there. I'm, I'm experimenting drawing the submarine and the boat. And there's Manfred snapping his fingers in that picture and the man standing in the corner. Eventually it gets onto my kind of best paper here we go. There's some of the finished paintings from Manfred the Baddie. There's him with his sandwiches and giving pleasure rides. See, that's my kind of fancy drawing, my fancy painting. And it takes me ages to do these and working them all out. But because I have a good scribble and I work them out on rough paper first, it stops me making mistakes on the finished thing. And it also lets me have a bit of a doodle like you were seeing in my notebook where I can be really scribbly with ideas. There we are, and it doesn't matter if it's going to be right or wrong or if it makes sense as a story. I mean, some of these pictures are really big, so they take absolutely ages. So I want to have fun and be silly and scribble and, oh, which pictures could there be? What how could that smash out of the floor and stuff like that? Before I get onto the actual big, big pictures, I kind of rough it out. But some illustrators would skip all these rough stages and they just get their very best bit of drawing paper and they go straight in there with the pen and the paint. And if it goes a bit wonky or wrong, doesn't matter. They can throw it away or they can just bend it around. Different illustrators work in different ways. But if you like having a bit of a scribble before you start or a bit of a doodle, a bit of a daydream, that can be quite a good tip. If you want to get straight onto the paints and the pens, that's fine too. So what we'll do, I'll give you a few little ideas, a little pattern for maybe thinking of stories and do some drawing for you. Let's find a, a few pens, there we go. And I've got pencils and things. A good tip if you're working with pencil, then sharpen your pencil. Maybe I like a nice sharp one. But sometimes you can doodle straight with a pen. See, I can go in. What shall I draw? I could draw. Um, I could draw that rabbit I was drawing, couldn't I? I've never really put him in a book. See, I would have forgotten him, but I daydreamed him and then drew him. Yeah, and he's a kind of stripy bunny with big ears like that. Is he a goodie or a baddie? I'm not sure. Maybe he's a hero. I think because he looks kind of quite mean. He's got a sort of robber mask on, but yeah, maybe he's more of a kind of Zorro type kind of masked hero with his stripe over his eyes like that. And he's got a sword and stuff. So you can draw in pencil, but you can sometimes just dive straight in with the pen. That can be quite nice too. You know, you can just go, maybe that makes it clearer for you to see. There we go. So that's my one. And I think yeah, maybe, Maybe it'd be funnier if he, in the story he was he was going to be a, a goody character. Maybe the character in the story, I think I will have a baddie in a story. You don't have to, but it can give you a lot of action to have a baddie and a goody in a story. Gives you somewhere to go. Maybe he's kind of, or maybe she, yeah, maybe she's a she. There we go. Yeah, she's called, um, what's she called? I don't know, I'll come back to that in a minute. Sometimes you can't think I'm Miss... Miss X. No, I can't think what she's called. I'll come back to that and think of a name for her. You can do that when you're writing a story. What could the baddie be? Maybe the baddie is something which looks kind of cute. Another rabbit, maybe. Let's have a whole story of rabbits. But there we are. We'll have a really kind of cute little rabbit. There we are. Lovely little rabbit. There we are with our eyelashes and whiskers. There we go. Nice little bow tie very good see I'm just I didn't know I was going to draw a bow tie till I just drew that bow tie that can be quite good you can see I'm not using my best paper I'm using my rough paper so you know if it all comes out wrong doesn't matter that can be a good tip what kind of 
What kind of trousers? Little stripy trousers. There we are. And a waistcoat. Quite frilly cuffs. There we are. Quite fancy. A very, very rich rabbit lives in a very kind of nice place, I think. Maybe they're quite young. They've inherited loads of kind of money. Or people think they have. They think they're a kind of good rabbit who's very kind and rich and nice. But secretly, when nobody's looking, they're a bad rabbit. Right, I'm going to do some baddie eyebrows. This is a good tip. You want to make somebody who's looking good look bad. There we are. Oh, yeah. Eyebrows like that. Even eyelids sometimes. Maybe I'm kind of making them look a bit sinister. Like they're thinking, yeah. So that's the baddie rabbit. And he's called, um, what can he be called? He could be called um, Roland. Roland the rabbit. There we are. Roland the rabbit. We've got a nice our thing going on and where could he live he could live in what did i say somewhere quite rich a sort of rabbit mansion there we are there's some pillars there we go and a kind of fancy doorway like that there we go but that's really his burrow but i think he lives in a kind of fancy burrow which is so i'm going to go on to another bit here maybe it's kind of beach with sand dunes and stuff Oh yeah, maybe right under the beach. I like a secret tunnel. There's his entrance there. And under the beach, he's got a whole network. There's the sea. So maybe he's got machines. Roland the Evil. He's so rich because he's a robber, really. There he is. Going down his secret steps. He's got a tunneling machine. There we go, with sort of that sort of spiky tunneling thing there his controller and that can go up that way into the city to rob banks he's got maybe he's got an underwater speedboaty kind of submarine thing there like a kind of oh it's like a shark yeah there we are like a sort of mechanical shark and he can drive it there he can go out from the beach and out into the sea and he can rob boats and stuff there we are so we've got an evil rabbit driving a sort of shark submarine with a big kind of grabber claw. See, I'm not doing my fancy drawing here. I'm just doing some kind of scribble drawing just to get my imagination going. And there's somebody out on the boat who's about to be in trouble. Just an ordinary, what should we have? Let's have a, there you are, little girl. Having a little line just near the beach. She can swim and she's just, She's just been, there we are, swimming. She's got flippers on. She's just having a nap. But here comes Roland the evil rabbit. He's about to kidnap her or steal all her stuff. He's going to steal her sandwiches. There we are. She's got her little packed lunch there and stuff. There's the beach over there. So she's not very far out. So he's being a right old menace. So that's some stuff really about the um, the baddie rabbit, but I can come back to my, or what, Miss X, what shall I call her? I'll call her Lucinda, there we are, Lucinda, the, the cool, good rabbit, who's a hero. And she lives, um, by contrast, let's have her up in the sky, because he's down in the burrows. So she's got a really good cloud base there with a kind of observatory for looking at stars and a telescope for looking down at the earth. There she is, with her ears there stripy oh there we are and she's she's looking down oh, da, da. she's got an exclamation mark there because she can see the robbery going on the on the boat so she's got what she got she's got like a sort of plane or something which hangs here it's like a sort of helicopter there we go there we go with some wheels and stuff and a chute there we are so she zooms down the chute into her helicopter and speeds off to the rescue. There we are. There we are. I'll try and draw this a bit more carefully. You can see I'm keeping it quite scribbly though, because I'm really just trying to get some ideas for a story. She drives a helicopter that way. I better put the rotors on, otherwise it won't fly. There we go. Like that. It's got wheels out there. Maybe it needs water water floats. I don't know. No, I guess she can hover. And she's got a ladder all rolled up at the back there. So she can swing down to the rescue. So there we are, Lucinda to the rescue. 
and there she goes down to the water. I won't finish this story because really I, I'm just showing you how I've got started with some bad ideas and some good ideas and some heroes and some inventions and secret hideouts. Why don't you try and make up your own story? Don't go with my rabbits. Make up, think of your favourite animal or it could be people like yourselves or extraordinary people. Think of, so the ingredients really, a goodie, a baddie or start with the baddie and who's going to stop them could be the goodie. What's the baddie's hideout? Where is it? How extraordinary and secret can you make it? What's the goodie's hideout? How do they get around? How does the baddie travel and do their baddie things? What's the baddie's inventions? What's the goodie's inventions? And then you've got a story, goodie versus baddie. But you could have anything. You could have any kind of animal. You could have people like yourself. You could have children. You could have it anywhere in the world or you can make up your own planet, your own place. Anything you like any secret world or magical thing or something really realistic. You could set it in the place where you live and just make it a really extraordinary thing in a very ordinary place all going on. Good, so have a good scribble, make up some stories, make them into little books. You can fold little sheets of paper. You can get fancy paper if you've got fancy drawing paper or you can just use rough paper. You can film it on your computer or photograph it, anything you like. So that, hopefully that's given you a few tips to get started. Don't forget, to sign up to the summer reading scheme who's been behind this whole video and it, I know the library where you live might still be closed but there'll be plenty of silly squad librarians on hand online so get in touch with your library and get some help and some information about the summer reading scheme there's more coming up after this anyway but good luck with your reading and your writing and your drawing and your imagining and your scribble and your being silly so thank you very much for your time.